realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Rodman.
God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to Name Your Miracle tonight. I am your host, Apostle Michelle Purdue. It is a great honor to be back. It feels like it's been two or three months since I've been on, but it's okay. It's okay. Tonight we're going to dis- tonight we're going to discuss something, and I want to go into a word of prayer because I'm going to make this a two part series, and we just we just going to go into prayer and just ask the Lord to take just take over. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Father God, we dedicate this this time to you, Father. To take pure control, Father God. Father God, we thank you for another day that you have blessed us, God. Not many people rose up this morning, but God, you allow us to rise up and we say thank you. And Father God, we ask that you bless each and every one that's listening to this this show. Father God, we ask that you bless Kimmy and the whole relation family, God. Keep us in one love, God. Because you said in your word that we love one another as you have loved us. And, Father God, we give you all the glory and all the honor. For your name we pray. Amen and amen. Wow. Like I say, welcome to Name Your Miracle. God is so good. I feel like it's been two or three months since I've been on, but I've been really busy. I have um, started a new show that's on uh, popping. It's called the BH. Uh, PH, BH, Better Health, yeah, BH program is called Better Health, and, you know, if you get a chance, roll on over to Bodbean, Bod, I mean, Podbean, Podbean, excuse me, and get a chance to listen to it, but tonight we're going to talk about a topic called poverty, and I just came out of a good Bible series teaching from my mentor, and he broke this thing down about poverty. And I'm sure that a lot of us, a lot of us never gave it a second thought about this. But when he began to break it down, I said, my God, my God, my God. The Bible says that the devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. The devil also knows how to attack you. He knows how to mess you up. And how does he mess you up? It's through money. The Bible says in the book of 3 John, he says, I wish above all that you prosper. Be in good health even as your soul prosper. Well, how can we prosper if every time we try to do something, we get knocked back? and I'm going to share a few scriptures, and then I'm going to break the word down, what I'm trying to say in this. Let's, lead, let's read in the book of Deuteronomy, the 15th chapter, 7, verse through the 8th. Um, it says, if any of the towns in the land that the Lord your God is giving you there is a fallen Israelite in need, then do not be selfish and refuse to help him. Instead, be gracious. And lend him as much as he needs. That's in Deuteronomy the 15th chapter, verse seven, verses seven through eight. Then it also says in Jeremiah the 22nd chapter, the third verse, "I, the Lord, command you to do what is just right. Protect the person who is being cheated from the one who's been cheat, who is cheating him. Do not ill threats." or oppressed foreigners, orphanages, or, or widows, and do not kill the innocent people in this holy place. Now, I cannot teach like my mentor, but I can kind of break the word down on how he did it. The enemy knows how to fix it to where that we cannot get things done. I look at myself, and I'm a very visionary when, you know, I have a lot of great things, but the enemy knocked me out. I was working and doing pretty good. I had started my TV network and was doing pretty good. But guess what? I lost the job. The man couldn't help him dying, but 
it really wasn't his time to die, to be honest with you, but he just gave up like, you know, any elder person do. And it's like, God, what in the world? And my mentor taught this class on this. The enemy is a spirit of poverty. Poverty is nothing but a demonic force from the devil. Because the devil knows if you got money, you're going to tend to the elderly, you're going to give to the widows, you're going to give to your children, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And most of all, you will help the kingdom of God. But if he can knock you back from doing what you, what God has called you to do, he's got you. And in listening to this, I'm like saying, my God, my God. I didn't look at it this way. He says sickness. Sick, sickness is nothing but demonic. The devil knows if he gets you sick, you can't work. You cannot supply the needs for your family. If you are a single mother and only thing that, that those children got to do is rely on you, you 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 stuck like Chuck. You got to make yourself get up and go to work. No matter how sick you are, you got to make yourself get up and go to work. And if you try to apply for food stamps, you got Uncle Sam looking at you telling you, well, you make too much. There was a lady in Texas killed herself. She went to the food stamp place. And because they did something crazy, the lady couldn't take it anymore. She killed herself right in front of the whole people there. And it was just a, it was, it was a technicality in the computer system. Poverty. Poverty is of the devil. The Bible says, I give you power to get wealth. That's in the book of Deuteronomy. But the devil knows, that the enemy knows, if I if you do something, or I know she's going to do or he's going to do this and he's going to do it. That's the reason why you got to keep on pressing. You can't give up. You cannot let that poverty spirit tear you down. And then when God bless you to do things, bless somebody else. And this is another problem among the body of Christ and among people in general. They don't want to be a blessing to nobody else. They will see you struggling. And then they will not help you. Let's read what let's let's read what um the book of first John three seventeen says. Rich people who see a brother or a sister in need, yet close their hearts against them, cannot claim that they love God. God became poor that we may become rich. But if you see your sister or your brother in need or trying to do something. Give you a good example. I had someone to tell me when I had lost when I had lost my job. And this person told me, she said, Oh, the Lord told me to bless you. Okay. The Lord said for me to give you a certain amount of money. I said, Okay. I said, Well thank God. I said, Well, you know, do what you got to get done, and I, I get it when I need it. Well, I needed it for something to do some advertising with my um, with my, uh, my, my my companies. When I got a hold to her and, and asked her about it, oh, I'm sorry. I had something to come up, so I had to spend the money. I said, no problem. No problem. Don't, don't even worry about it. I'm sorry. I said, that's okay. Don't even worry about it. But she forgot that she told me that God said for her to bless me. You see, sometimes people play around with God too much. But then again, the enemy. That's the reason why you that's the reason why you got to have a foundation. And in that foundation, you got to make sure that your foundation is anchored. You got to make sure the Bible says, on this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You got to make sure that your foundation is solid. I, I was remember my mentor was talking about foundation and, and, and he's, he's an African man and he, he's a trip. I just laugh at him so much. And he was saying, when I think, when he said, when I think of foundation, I think of cement. 
He said, you wouldn't put that foundation on your face. He said, I think of semen. He said, that's all I, I, he said, it's all singles are semen. When you plant that foundation, when you, when you plant that foundation, I think about my, 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 my sister, Kimmy, who is the founder of the, the founder and president of Elation Magazine, and how she, she's, going, she's doing what she's got to get done. No matter what, no matter what, what it takes, she's gonna get it done. And I seen today when she said, "We're twenty four hours." That is God. She persevered. She didn't give a care what come and go. She went straight through. I'm gonna make this happen. She did not. She did not let that spirit of poverty get in the way. And that's what you got to do. You got to sit there and tell the devil, no, no. I'm going to make it. If you got to take little nickels and dimes and put it, my family laughed at me. I got a jar full of pennies and I got a jar full of uh, nickels and quarters and dimes. And they laugh at me because when I see change on the floor, I pick it up. And one of my daughters got hit to death, so now when she sees change on the floor, she makes sure she get it because she knows I'm going to get it. Because you got change on the floor, you know. And so my ex husband, who was laughing, so one day, he had asked my daughter now, he said, look, I need for you guys to do me a favor. He said, I don't work so much. I'm working so much until I don't have time to clean my room up. He said, would y'all come over and clean the room up? I'll pay y'all. So, you know, my daughter and I said, yeah, we don't care. I kid you all not. I found over a hundred and some dollars worth of change on his floor. My daughter found like 80 some dollars worth of change on his floor. And we both looked at her and she said, daddy. He said, what? He said, when I come home from work, I just throw my pants and stuff down. The change just fall down. I had to go to his house the other day. He said, uh-huh, here's some change. He said, for your Christmas present, I'm just going to give you a whole jar of change. And I just bust out laughing. But guess what? Guess what? That change will help me do the things that I need to get done. You got to be, you got to have that foundation. And you got to say, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter come hell or high water. I'm going to get this done. You cannot allow poverty to set in. You cannot do it. The time, the money. I know. I know it's not all Christians that listen at this network. So I'm going. I'm going in deep. The money that you spend on whiskey, beer, cigarettes. I know here in the state of Florida for a pack of cigarettes, it's like seven or eight do- seven or eight dollars. For a, a carton of cigarettes, it's almost thirty dollars. Well, that's thirty dollars that you can you can you can go online and see how can you plan- start your own business. There are so many home based businesses out here until it's some it is it's just too much. You don't know which way to choose from. But guess what? You're kicking up against poverty. Saints of God, poverty is demonic. I don't care who you are. Poverty is demonic. And the Bible says, if you got a sister or brother and they are wealthy, and they cannot help you, give you, that means they doesn't love God. So what you got your bills to pay? So what big, so what big deal? We all got bills to pay. But guess what? If you see your brother or your sister in need, you go to them and you help them. For a year, I have been battling and battling and battling. No one knew anything about what I was dealing with. I put little things on Facebook. People just run over it. And I just sit down and I'm like saying, God, what in the world is going on? And what it is, the spirit of poverty, because the devil knows that I'm going to bless the kingdom of God. I am a financial kingdom blesser. I believe in blessing the kingdom of God. And the devil don't want that. I look at so many people. I was feeling so down today, tonight. I was talking to Kimmy. I texted her. I said, I don't know what's going on, but I feel down. So much killing going on in this world. So many people are dying. 
So many people are taking their lives. And that's not of God. God, I know I know some people might say, well, well what what can we do? We all can come together. And we all love is the greatest key to everything. Love ye one another as I love you. My goodness, the Buddhist people love love each other more than the Christians do. The Muslims love each other more than the Christians do. All these different religions love each other more than the Christians do. And we are the ones supposed to be right. You got poor Christians. You got jealous Christians. You got envy Christians. And it's like, what in the world is going on here? And John just said it. First John just said it. Rich people who see a brother or sister in need, yet close their hearts against them, cannot claim that they love God. That's in First John 3.17. So I want to encourage you tonight, when you pray, you want your miracle, and that miracle is God come against the spirit of poverty in my family. My family is wealthy. We're going to be a blessing to somebody else. We're going to bless the kingdom of God. And when you do that, you see God change. You see God move things around. Build a foundation. Build that foundation. I'm going to do another teaching on this next month because this is this is needed in the body of Christ. Let's kick against poverty. Let's stand up. And let's say we're not going to deal with it. Let's teach our young women how to start up businesses. Let's teach our young men how to start up businesses. When we, when the black people had the, the black Wall Street, everybody was helping one another. But now in this generation, everybody don't got jealous of one another. For what? For what? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this, this, this opportunity that you bless me to speak. And Father God, I ask God that we that you will bless the people that hear God. Father God, I come against the spirit of poverty. I've taken authority over it right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I praise you, God. Because you're such an awesome God. Father God, you said in your word in the book of Deuteronomy that you give us power to get wealth. And for everybody that is listening to this broadcast, I bless everyone with wealth. I bless them with a vision and a dream, God, to create wealth. And then I bless them, God, to get the money so they could go through to do the vision that you've given them, given them to do, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I thank you, and I give you all the glory and all the honor, for in your name we pray, amen and amen. Well, listen, until next until next month, be encouraged. I will be talking, I will be teaching again on this subject, poverty and a foundation, and I will have a, a, a surprise for you all to show you what God is doing in my life. He's making a way out of no way. Yes, it's hard, I'm not going to lie. But I put my trust in him. Man will fail you, but God won't. I love you all. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Shalom.